A recurrent neural network can output one of two things. It either outputs the whole sequence, or it outputs just the final element of the sequence. Both of the implementations have their own uses. You would use the whole sequence when you wanted to keep doing something with it, for example if you wanted to stack multiple RNNs on top of each other. On the other hand, you would usually use the final state of the sequence if you no longer needed to keep the time series, like if it was in the last RNN layer. In the last layer, using the final output state of the RNN can make sense for two reasons. One, the RNN is supposed to remember everything that happened before and use that information to compute the final output state. And two, the output of a neural network is often not a sequence, so the output of the RNN needs to be reduced. The other important thing to understand in RNN implementation is how they are trained. During training, most methods don't understand how to deal with loops. So instead what happens is that the RNN gets unrolled a certain number of steps. This effectively makes the RNN into a normal feedforward network, so there are no problems training it. Unfortunately, limiting the number of steps effectively imposes a limit on how much information the network is allowed to learn from during training, which means that during execution they don't necessarily understand information farther back in the sequence. For example, if you train an RNN and only unroll three steps, but then during execution you try a sequence with a hundred steps, on step 99, the network isn't going to have any idea on how to handle the information from step 0 to 95 because it wasn't trained to use that information. For more information on how training an RNN works, look at the description below for links to backpropagation through time.